Our gospel for today comes from St. John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Jesus our Lord, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is this word that's been on my mind all week, Ubuntu. It's an African word that means humanity. And more appropriately, it's the universal bond that connects all humanity. I've heard this word before, but I don't think I ever really internalized or understood it. And now I've heard it talked about in great detail at two separate events this month. The first was the 2018 Southeast Minnesota Synod Assembly held three weekends ago in Mankato. And using it here made sense to me since the general theme of the assembly was about celebrating our global congregation. There were predominant leaders of the Lutheran Church from Tanzania, South Sudan, and Colombia. I appreciated the simple explanation of, that, of the word that the leaders used. I am because we are. Then, two weekends later, so last weekend, I was in Minneapolis for my seminary graduation. And I was, I was sitting in the sanctuary of this church where the ceremony was held. I listened as our student commencement speaker used this word in his speech. Ubuntu. I am because we are. And the speakers at the Synod Assembly and the speaker at my graduation were talking about very different things in very different contexts. But this word stuck with me. I am because we are. I wanted to learn more about it. And I learned that there's a real relationship between Ubuntu and the greater Christian church. Ubuntu theology. And Ubuntu theology is the perception of the Ubuntu philosophy that recognizes the humanity of a person 
through a person's relationship with other people. Bishop Desmond Tutu used his Christian faith to offer a perspective that Ubuntu is a model of forgiveness and reconciliation in which human dignity and identity are drawn from the image of the triune God. Human beings are called into being because they are created in the image of God. Ubuntu, a necessity for relationships with other people because of our relationship with the triune God. It's who we are in God's community. It's going out into the world with the guidance of the triune God, created by God, inspired by Jesus, and sustained by the Holy Spirit. And it seems pretty fitting this weekend since we are paying special attention and celebrating the triune God. Our gospel for today doesn't give too much insight into the Trinity. There are some verses that affirm the Trinity, talking about no one being able to enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit, and how the wind blows where it chooses, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. We also hear that the powerful Pharisee, Nicodemus, knew that Jesus came from God simply because Jesus was performing signs like turning water into wine at the wedding of Cana only a few verses earlier. Jesus coming from God at least acknowledges two-thirds of the Trinity. And even though, in my opinion, John doesn't help us to understand a whole lot about the Trinity, these verses confirm what it means to be a child of God. These verses affirm the promises of John that we find back in the first chapter of the gospel. Because we are simply born, we are children of God. And because we are children of God, we are then able to recognize our identity as children of God. And because of this recognition of who we are as God's children, we are given an identity different than any other. It's an identity that helps us understand our role in the community we are given by the triune God. Now John has a distinct definition of what it means to be a child of God that's a little bit different than the other three gospel writers. In John, being a child of God is not just a nice thing to think about, but it's a real relationship. The triune God will be the one who provides you with everything that you need for your life to be sustained and abundant. I am because we are. And our reading from Romans also draws on the identity of being a child of God. And with this gives us a deeper look into how our identity isn't just as a child of God the Father, but a child of the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in verse 14 of our reading from Romans, the author Paul seems to really get it. He says that all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. And with the Spirit, we bear witness to God with our own spirits as children of God. We are joint heirs with God and Jesus because of the Spirit. This is an identity we are given in our baptisms, where we are sealed and marked with the cross of Christ forever. We become this bigger, we become part of this bigger family, claiming our identity as brothers and sisters in Christ. We, together, are children of God. I am because we are. And we alone are ordinary, but the Trinity claims us as children of God. And because of this Trinity, we are not just made members of the family, the body of Christ, but we are made heirs who will inherit all the riches of the kingdom of heaven. And this was a concept that I had never really thought about before. Because we all are one family with and under the triune God, We are joint heirs with Christ. 
we will get the same riches that Christ gets. We will all inherit the same eternal life that Christ has received through God and the Holy Spirit. Whenever we encounter Christ, we encounter everyone else in Christ. It's not just a me and Jesus or a you and Jesus thing. It's us and Jesus, the community of children of God. Jesus is a child of God, and so are we. And this is not me saying that we are the same as Jesus, but we are heirs of the kingdom, just like Jesus. We are born of God, just like Jesus. We are sustained by the Spirit, just like Jesus. Jesus teaches us what it means to be heirs of the kingdom through what he did on earth. He healed the broken. He gave value to the lives of people who had little to no value in society. He stood up for the broken. He loved all people because Jesus knew that he and everyone living at the time and everyone who had already lived and died and everyone who would someday live on earth, all people in the history of people, we are all part of the family. This family is the Trinity and us. All of us, I am because we are. In most seasons in Minnesota, it's common to look up into the sky and see a flock of geese flying. When they fly together, they fly in a V formation. And when you see geese flying in this V formation, you might consider what science has discovered as to why they fly this way. And as each bird flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the bird directly behind it. By flying in the V formation, the whole flock adds at least 71% greater flying range than if they were flying alone. People who share a common direction and sense of community can get where they are going more quickly and easily by traveling on the thrust of one another. And when a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to go at it alone. And they quickly get back into formation to take advantage of the lifting power of the bird in front. If we have as much sense as a goose, we will stay in formation with the people who are headed the same way that we are. And when the head goose gets tired, it rotates to the back of the formation and another goose flies in the front. When a goose gets sick or is wounded and it falls out of formation, two other geese will always go with it and follow it to lend protection and help. They stay with the goose until it's able to fly again. And only then do they launch out on their own or with another formation to catch up with their group. If we have the sense of a goose, we will stand by each other like that. I am because we are. The Trinity can be seen as a glimpse of what can be if relationship is at the heart of who and what the church strives to be. We experience the love of God in relationships that are good and whole and solid and loving. The Trinity means that God, three persons God, committed to a relationship with you and me, the whole community of believers together. The Trinity is essentially love, wrapped into a neat, little, sometimes hard to understand package. Love for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Love for one another, and love for yourself. We hear it in our gospel, in some of the most well-known words in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We are created by God, inspired by Jesus, and sustained by the Holy Spirit. I am because we are. 
Thanks be to God. Amen.